Well, this is a good question. Who asked this one? Emil or, or Emily asked about um, how... Definitely, definitely not Emily. <laughs> it's just Emil. Okay. All right. Sorry, Emil. Um, so, so you asked about how much of the, of the potential signals that are coming uh, from space are we actually looking at in our SETI experiments. And the answer to that is it, it depends on how you count, but, but regardless of how you count, basically an infinitesimal amount of, of the potential sort of signal space that we could be searching, uh, are we capable of searching now with, with our existing telescopes. And, and the reason is, is because uh, uh, there are a number of them, but um, for one, the telescopes that we use now can only see a small patch of the sky. So we're very rarely uh, looking at, at more than um, about a, a ten thousandth or so of the sky at, at any given time. Um, and the, the computers that we have and the digital instruments that we have are only capable of looking at a, at a small amount of the electromagnetic spectrum. So a small amount of the possible, um, uh, say in the, in the radio portion of the spectrum, a small amount of the, the possible radio frequencies that we could be searching um, are, are accessible to us at any given time uh, with one of our instruments. Um, and, and also we're, we're not really exploring the, um, the algorithmic space uh, as much as we could. So there's a lot of different types of signals that we could be looking for uh, that we're just not able to look for because we don't have the, the computing available to us. Um, so uh, there's, a, there's a rich future ahead for, for SETI, I think, um, in that our, our experiments are always becoming more capable um, our telescopes are, are getting um, more and more capable in terms of the amount of the sky that they can see. Um, so although we're, we're just kind of barely scratching the surface, um, we're, uh, we're doing better and better.